You see this Tyrannosaurus right here? It just looks a little different than usual, right? But what have I told you? That this is a celestial being capable of leveling entire cities. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Primal Fear. One of the craziest overall mods that I've ever played. See this blue guy right here? He comes revenge. This is the final boss that I have to take down. But before that we have to defeat this demonic reaper empress. Celestial Indominus. Nova. The Destroyer. The Creator. And so many other things that are standing in my way. Now I have never played this mod before. So uh, this should be interesting. You're about to see me die a lot. Okay. A lot. And you're about to see me lose my mental stability. Struggle. And suffer so so much so you better subscribe okay because this like I said this was not easy to make anyways yeah i think i think that's a good intro so let's get started on day one on a cold beach on shigo islands welcome to 100 days of primal fear Alright, this is uh, Primal Fear, perhaps one of, if not the most requested mod on my channel. What is that? We're going to do 100 days in this, and uh, I have no idea how this mod works. I have no idea how to progress in this mod, I have no idea what the things in this mod does. This is going to be one crazy, crazy adventure. Indeed, I had no clue how to play this mod, as this was my first time at it. But I sure do know how to progress in this game. <laughs> and in no time, I had a bow, clothes, arrows, and I saw my very first Primal Fear creature. That dodo seems very, very big. I'm death. That is an enormous, that is an enormous dodo. I did not yet know how powerful this giant red dodo could be, but I knew that I had to take it down to prove to everyone that I was the alpha male of this beach. Toward the end of the day, I had a couple of foundations down surrounded by spikes, and I took ah! on the red dodo. Ah! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Yes! After taking it down, I found that I could make primal spears that have the same effect as trank arrows, so I carved a few just in case this was something that I wanted to tame. I also got some food cooked up so I wouldn't starve, and then it became day two. Oh, I need a PT to progress, so, uh, you there. 180! Oh, in other cases, I'd be more than happy with that. You know what? Let's grab the 180. In other cases, you say? Yeah. Yeah, well, regarding this being a crazy mod, I also cranked the total maximum level up from 150 up to 300. So, if you find, like, a 180 like this PT right here, right? Then there's nothing too crazy. Something which is a bit crazy though is this, my man's. What is that? What the f is that? Uh, ah! Yo! I had like a grenade. Oh! But all good, since I now have the awesome spyglass, which is a very good tool to see just what kind of modded kibble these dinos need to get tamed. Which I'll explain that that whole system works with the kibble a bit later in this video. But uh, then I saw just how good the spears are by taming this parasaur. I also took down another alpha dodo to discover something pretty good. Oh! You're joking! You're joking! <laughs> Damn! Okay. After my dinos got tamed, I just parked them at my base because I wanted to take down an alpha parasaur soul. Considering the loot we got from that one alpha dodo, I thought that I would get something even better from taking down an alpha parasaur, which I fought during the night. Ah! No, 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 no. <gasps> Where did all of my HP go? Down. Where did my HP go? On day three, I took it out. 
Yes. Defeat. <sighs> Still just armor blue. Uh, eh. I'm sorry, what? Durability 1300. Now remember, I'm out here being excited over something so measly as 2000 durability because my monkey brain was still hardwired to vanilla progression. But seeing something like this made me extremely happy, so I kept taking down alphas and toxic for their loot and to level up, as this was a very fast and efficient way to like, yeah, like I said, level up. Doing all this, I also got a PT set on, went out exploring a little bit, and I saw just how insane this mod pack truly was. What? <laughs> What? That's a- ah! Oh, that's... It's a Quetzal just- He took one bite. That Bracky barely survived. Well, should've just died. On day four, I took down a very injured Alpha Bronze with PT for some levels, but got f all as it dropped no loot. Later, I also tried taking down an Apex Thorny Dragon, but I just let it be as I was sure that it could just one-shot on us if it wanted to. At night, I explored more of the map, and I saw my first Celestial on D5. <laughs> really, the real reason I was exploring this map was to find a proper base location that I could call home. But every good looking spot had either a giant thing that could one shot me or a giant thing that could. Drum roll, please! Two shot me! Yeah, I know. <laughs> Crazy, right? I traveled back home, but I saw and killed this droidica for some in insane resources, really. Raw smelted metal! Okay! On day six, I found a great spot where I wanted my base to be. I thought that it was very safe and had a great natural view of the surroundings. Emphasis on the word thought, gentlemen. So, I got to work chopping trees, placing some foundations as spam to block wild dinosaurs, spawns, and slowly moving my stuff inside the parasaur from one place to the other. Day 7. And while I was still getting stuff from one location to the other, I fought an apex dillo. Now, yeah, this was just a dilophosaur, but it put up quite the fight and nearly killed us. Damn! I also discovered a very interesting loot drop on my base. A dodo. It's a holy dodo. The rest of day 7 was spent exploring as I needed some crystal for some pokeballs. I searched far and wide. Every mountain in sight. But all I found was more explosions than danger. And then a parent primal cancer with a boss music tune to it. I also saw that you could now knock out same wyverns. Oh, and that fjord talks are now aggressive toward everything. At night time, after searching and searching and finding not a single bit of crystal, I found the biggest Oppenheimer fan yet. And so I kept searching far and wide, checking out mountain after mountain, finding ferocious and dominus rexes, mega monkeys with 3 million HP and I stumbled across a very impressive cave. And considering I was looking for crystal, I went inside. Crystal? I think there's no crystal here. Cool, we wasted even more time. Even more time. And then, finally, I found some tiny, just miniscular crystal nodes. No wonder that I couldn't find anything before. And then returned to my parasaur after crafting some soul balls from the soul ball mold. And finally, I could settle down at my new base. As I turned into day 9, I started placing down a couple of structures that would be useful. And I knocked out and tamed a couple of dodos. Now ladies and gentlemen that are watching, I can explain how the kibble system works. The kibble system in Primal Fear is very straightforward for most. But extremely overwhelming for new beginners. So let me explain how this goes. Let's say that you want to tame that alpha poison by the missile. Then you would need alpha kibble. Alpha kibble is crafted by getting eggs from the previous tier of dino. So toxic eggs. And you can tame toxic dinos with toxic kibble which is crafted from regular good old vanilla eggs. And now look at this little progression line I made for you all. Like I said, you need the eggs from the previous tier of dinos to progress upwards. Oh, and of course, before I forget it, 
you need to use crops. You need to farm in this game. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's how Primal Fear works. You got that? Great, let's continue. I was on this mountain looking for even more crystal for Primal Smithy, which you need to craft the different types of kibbles in the mold. Oh my! I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. Oh. But when you die once in Primal Fear, then you can't be certain that you won't die again. As I learned soon enough. Oh, ah, what? Why? Why? Why did you suddenly... Why? I, I, I sense a death compilation coming in. I, I don't want to sense that. Oh. No. <laughs> Please drop some stuff. No, no. Oh. Okay, we made it off. What's the option here? Do we go overseas or do we turn a PT? Turn PT. Uh. Oh! Oh! Goodness! Oh! <laughs> no! Ah! An Indominus. Okay, Reaper Queen. Jump off, jump off, jump off, jump off. Okay, good. Oh, oh. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, much better. Okay, okay, okay. Jump. No, too early. No. No. Ah! Come on! Come on! <laughs> oh my god! No, on day 10 I finally have my stuff. And humiliated, that's how I felt here, humiliated, I got in a canoe and started sailing to Fucaso. But I couldn't even get home! Because if you remember correctly, there were carters, reapers, rock tricks, and so much more on that island. So I had to look for a PT to tame first. Uh, uh. Oh. Blow him away! Okay, 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 where's this? Okay, reduce the food, reduce the food. Okay, okay! <laughs> Yes, finally! Well, that was unnecessarily stressful. Oh, and it wouldn't even have mattered that much, because that Karsha I talked about, yeah, he's dead. Died to some overgrown parrots with elemental powers. Day 11, and I finally got a couple of forges placed down. Before circling my island and finding out... Yeah. This place, this place is extremely dangerous. Way too dangerous, with death around every corner. But I desperately, desperately needed metal. So I put away all of my gear and went out with just a single metal pick. One successful run. And we got the Primal Smithy. Very nice. And now I just did it again. This time feeling a little bit more confident. Foggy night, and I went on run number three, which was successful once more. And I figured out that these rocks with cracks are the ones that give a lot of crystals. Oh, and I realized that it maybe would be best to have some beds. So I obviously got those placed down, and I tested it out. Yeah, the beds are working. Wonderful. I got myself a beautiful set of armor, okay? Alpha Fleck armor. Very nice. Check it out. Anyways, I got a few couple of wooden foundations and I started chopping down trees and crushing rocks to make plants and boxes. Cause what good would these trees do for me simply standing in the ground? I need to make a profit out here. And I'll chop down as many trees as I need to. Once those were all placed down, the next step would have to be irrigation pipes. A process I already dread with all of my heart. 
I then saw what I needed to get the first bit of kibble on a progression line. Toxic kibble. And yes, I need crops. Day 13 and I got a couple of grapples. The irrigation pipes. Then I placed them. You know, all I need now is fertilizer and ink model. But once more, I traveled the map. And I looted a lot of beaver dams around the big swamp on the island with the big cave. This map, Chigo Islands, is huge. And traveling is not an easy task in Little PT. I can't wait to upgrade to something better. Day 15 and I was back home. And I went around harvesting every bush in sight for all the different vegetable seeds. I also got the toilet made up. And after fixing it, I went crazy on the toilet. Once the crops were nice and fertilized, I just had to wait for them to grow. So I started crafting up some potent narcotics. Oh yeah, Primal Fear has different tiers to Trank Arrows. You can now upgrade normal narcotics with different kinds of items. But usually the blood of a strong creature. Day 18. And all I had to do now was to wait for the crops to grow. So I quickly logged out and installed a stacking mod that increased the total amount of one stack and decreased the overall weight of things. Considering that I had to wait, I went out of my PT again, looking for oil veins on the ground. So I traveled to the snow, and looked, and searched, looked some more, for absolutely nothing. So I had to resort to the most brokey method of getting oil yet. Trilobites. I had to kill trilobites and harvest them. <sighs> oh man, that day, day 19, I murdered so, so many trilobites. Ah! Oh shit! Here we go again. So close to home. Such absurdity. That's mother. F oh. Wait. Day twenty, and I had PT number three knocked out. Slowly, I'm getting sick and tired of this. But all good though, as I made a fabricator when I got home. That day I found something incredible. Something truly overlooked. This little droidica here. 9000 torpor. So I made good use of my better trank arrows. And it was knocked out in no time. Finally. Once it was time, I could feel confident again. Knowing that I could gun down anything standing in my way. I mean, come on! Do you really have to ask what I would do now? I gunned down countless little guys. So many mans died that day. And even a fabled dino. Yes! Yes! Which dropped some beautiful, just beautiful loot for me. I was happy. But that happiness was short-lived when I noticed that my soul terminal, got a few days prior, hadn't yet met any eggs. See, at that time I did not know that I had to go into my INI files of the server and copy-paste a bit of code to make this machine work the way it is supposed to. And honestly, why would I be expected to know that? I'm not, I'm not a modder, I'm just a guy who plays ARK. I don't do code, I do dinosaurs. Anyways, I got a brand new pistol from my little murder spree with Arnold, and I loaded it up. And I'll be real here, these pistols are really underrated. That day ended by going on a fat meta run. Now that I had Arnold, I no longer needed to worry about dying, and it felt nice getting home with 3000 unsmelted metal, which I put in the forges. I also got my first Toxic Kibble. That one Toxic Kibble only took me 22 days to craft. Woohoo! But now finally, on day 22, I got my first Toxic Dino. A little green dodo with very shiny eyes. Progress. After getting that dodo home, I got another Kibble and now I looked for a female to start egg production. But that was easier said than done. And I spent the whole day looking around for another Toxic Dodo. And at the end, Something very unfortunate happened again. No! Luckily with Arnold, it was very easy to get back to my dead body and retrieve my stuff. See, the problem wasn't necessarily finding the toxic dodo. Because those were everywhere. But it seemed like this map prioritized toxic zombie dodo spawns rather than normal ones. Which was extremely unfortunate. But I just decided to say, screw that and tame the zombie dodo variant. I was tamed. Get another PT. Hooray. I eventually just decided to tame two toxic zombie dodos because I simply couldn't be bothered looking for another normal one. I was also questioning just how safe this base location really was. 
I can't live here. I can't live here. I actually can't live here. Manticore, I can't live here. On the morning, I realized that fertilized toxic eggs, contrary to crafting toxic kibble, cannot be used to craft alpha kibble. So I really wanted the salt terminal to work and help me auto produce eggs. But I simply couldn't figure out the issue. And I really didn't feel like logging out and back into the server to fix it. Now, my big brain thought of a solution though taming as many toxic dodos as possible. And apparently, not just toxic dodos, but a toxic turtle as well. I then killed an apex allosaurus and an apex hyenodon. Because I hoped that they would leave behind some cool loot. But both of them just did not. When it was night, I crafted a tree platform and some sap taps. As I heard that sap could be an extremely useful resource in crafting stuff in Primal Fear. Such as the Primal Fabricated Sniper Rifle. An amazing tool for knocking out dinos. And I wanted to start production ASAP. Day 24 and we were crafting assault rifle bullets for said sniper rifle and my toxic dodos had started laying some eggs. So I got alpha kibble as well. Day 25 and then I didn't want to stay in the island of UKSO. It was just filled to the brim with dangerous creatures that could probably wipe me off the face of the earth. Dodo wyverns, manticores, you name it, it's been a fucus So I traveled back to the cave with the dinosuchus. And this time, I had Arnold. So I cleared out everything that lived there. You see, as I was afraid of giant flying bosses, I thought that a cave would be the safest place to live. And this large, spacious cave looked perfect. There were some dangerous megalosauruses around there though. Like this level 190 Alpha Megalo. Now I thought, yeah, this is perfect. I can tame the Megalosaurus to clear out the rest of the cave. And so day 26, I started knocking it out. Eventually I realized that I didn't have enough to knock out this red Megalo lady. So I traveled back to the old base to craft some new tranks. 90 potent narcotics and some of the blue ones. Very good. And after converting them into arrows, I finished knocking out the Megalosaurus. See, because that's blocking my path. Oh yes, go out, go out on land. Go out on land. Yes. Then, I placed down two boxes. Because I would have to move my whole piece of Fucuso over to the cave. Something which would be really, really annoying. I was not looking forward to it, but like I said, it was it was a necessary process. Oh. In the S Plus mod, there's a cliff platform one tier under stone. A wooden cliff platform. And if I got that, I could easily deck it out with my crafting stations. Forges, really everything. Back home, I obviously got the Megalo saddle. Before realizing just what kind of task was ahead of me, I was already dreading having to replan my plans, moving all the blueprints and loot I had collected these past days over to the cave. But I just said, Fuck it, we ball. The platform also proved extremely useful. It was gigantic and would be the foundation of my permanent base. On the night of 27, I also saw just what kind of a problem I was dealing with. Killed the Alpha. But I had no idea if my droning could take out the apex. So I just let it be in peace. Day 28. More moving. I also converted essentially all of my narcotics into potent narcotics. And crafted more gates to block the cave even better. I was trying to figure out how I could move all of my items easier. And I concluded that it would be better if I tried to convert as many resources as possible into crafted items. I also knew how to deal with the apex megalo. Just build around it I guess. That is my genius, it's, it's almost frightening. Day 29, more moving. This time I traveled with my whole primal smithy and everything that was stored inside of it. Once I was back at the previous base, I also crafted an insane god Goliath crossbow. I also potted up all of my toxic egg producers, the dodos, and on day 30, I don't know, an interesting enemy locked my path home though. And luckily the apex dragon didn't see me and I got into my base without any issues. Placed down the fabricator, generator and smithy and slowly this cave was becoming more and more beautiful by the second. Day 31 I got obsidian from the mountain up top and a whole lot of wood because I needed a new set of forges. Or better yet, this primal refining forge. 
which is said to be much, much faster than normal forge. Yeah, it was faster, right? Well, obviously, I harvested some metal around here to smell, and I crafted more gunpowder. Unfortunately, I'm not yet done with moving bases. Nope, now I had to get my crop plots with the pickup gun and all the irrigation pipes. This was the most annoying part of moving. See, I could easily replant them, of course, but then I must wait for them to grow again. So, I just procrastinated as I usually do when I have a whole lot of tasks before me, and just tamed a couple of alpha dinos. It was now the beginning of day 34, and I managed to knock out my first alpha PTE rather easily. And while I was eating my kibble, I chose beef with this little tiny fellow. Oh, chill bro, chill. There was also a primal tech dino which I had to lure away so it wouldn't kill my little PT. As primal tech dinos are just beefed up, ultra caked up tech dinos that can literally just one shot things if they wanted to. Before traveling back into my cave, I found a 140 alpha magmasaur. Now for those unfamiliar with what magmasaurs can do, let me explain why this one fellow is a game changer. Magmasaurs are excellent at harvesting metal and stone. Just one of the very best. So I got a trap and a couple of bear traps crafted up. Got an alpha PT saddle as well. And I finally, finally fixed the soul terminal. Day 35 and I made the worst trap ever created and lured the magmasaur inside of it. That was one big chonker. Oh my god, stop bro, I'm uh, stuck. Super sketch though. This crossbow was amazing at knocking the guy out. Just look at their speed. One shot was more than a thousand torpor, so I was asleep in no time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Big Lava to the family. Nice. Big fan, big fan. And of course, I knocked up some more Alpha Dinos. Alpha Dimorphodons. When it was night, I looked at the next requirements for kibble. The next tier above alpha was elemental kibble. Now elemental dinos? You need a lot of those, okay? Because you need their feathers. The elemental dinos are mostly griffins, parrots, or other flappy birds. And you need two of each type. Or at least, I was convinced and thought that you needed two of each type. Day 36 and big lava as a saddle. Of course, I used the two hours metal. A whole lot of it too. You guys remember that Apex Maglo I was so afraid of a bit earlier in this video? Well, I decided that today was the day to end oh, it. Oh, yes! Oh, hot, 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 hot! Dun, 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 dun. Hot, 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 hot! Yeah! Finally. Exterminated. Wait, we got a long neck! That long neck was extremely useful and would be the next best thing to knock creatures out. Pretty sure that it's capped stats as well. Now of course, I crafted ammo for it and a lot of potent trank bullets before going on a large wood run outside of my base. But when I tried to go back into my cave, I had some unwelcome visitors. Oh no, no. You're pinned now. Day 37 and I knocked out yet another Alpha Dimorphodon. And now, for the strangest Illuminati thing ever. Someone had joined my private Primal Fear server. How? How even? I had no idea. Last I checked you needed an IP in your favorites list to join someone's server. But this guy just spawned out of nowhere. Luckily, Mr. Mensch was a nice guy and simply left the server after talking with him for a little bit. Unfortunately, during this, I had died, and so I flew around like a headless chicken because I simply couldn't remember where I had died. But luckily on day 38, I found and got my stuff. Besides, hey, it's all good guys, no need to worry about a single thing or about anybody else joining. Because as soon as I got my stuff, I put the server offline and locked it behind a passcode. And then log back in to continue playing. Oh yeah, I died again that day. Whoa, whoa, no, no, don't a wyvern. Very, very unlucky. Nope. 
Oh, wow. So I had to travel around the entire map on my slow ass dimorphodon. Oh, that's so st oh, that's st and during the night, I tried to tame another one, but I decided not to finish the taming process. The A39 was Alpha PT taming day, as I knocked out not one, not two, not or three. No, no, I knocked out four different PTs that day. A40, and the cave had more dangerous things blocking my path. So I dealt with them with big lava. Though he sure took a beating this time. I saw an Alpha Fire Wyvern that day. And I wanted it. Little did I know how foolish this was. You see, at this time I didn't know how fast the Torpor Drop would be of one of these wyverns. Nor did I know that it had an necrotic friend nearby. <gasps> no! So I rushed over, fed it a little bit of Narka Berries, of all things, before seeing that all of my stuff was inside of a rock, glitched inside of it. How in heaven's name! And then I rushed home, got a metal pickaxe, Rushed back over to the Alpha Fire Wyvern, fed it some narcotics before. <gasps> no! Alright, another one dead on the scoreboard. So I unpotted another Dimorph, flew back over again, noticed the narcotic nearby but didn't really think much of it, and I harvested the rock. Got my shit. Flew back to base because this guy was just refusing to eat my alpha kibble. Got some tame helper, shoved down his throat, and finally, day 41, I had the fire wyvern. Great, let's 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 head the f out of here. Day 41 was of course spent testing out Smork the fire wyvern. And damn, this guy was strong, okay? And it just felt awesome flying on a giant red dragon again. I also tamed another PT. <sighs> another one. I don't know why I needed all of these, but whatever. I also got a little too cocky right here. Okay. I was in... Nash. Nash. But just, just wait for it. Yeah, that thing nearly once told me. No! What? How? How? What? In almighty. What the f was that? There. How did that happen? Like I just tamed that guy like two days ago. And then I lost it. To an explosion. This was stupid. And damn it. And this giant moss drop did not make me feel better about myself. But when you think that stuff couldn't get worse. It just does. Yeah stuff got so 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 much worse. Oh. Oh great. Oh, fabulous, fabulous. Why did they all aggro? Why? What did I do? What did I do? Oh, that's too far. Get back to scratch your I'm dead. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. No, the wandering loot boss. Ah, oh, great! Just before I got my stuff. Man, this is some bullshit! The last edge, bruv. So dumb! Oh, hell no! Nah. Look at that bag. No, no! Target acquired. Land! No, 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 no! Eventually, I realized that I needed some grapples to get my stuff because of how inconvenient this bag placement was. This whole process was the most annoying and irritating thing ever. And on day 43, I got my stuff. Mother f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f
You guys also remember that one alpha PT I didn't tame because I didn't want to get wiped across the floor by a primal car, no? Turns out it survived. Well timed it. Along with a brand new alpha dimorph. Oh yeah. Got a haircut that day. I also nearly lost another PT due to the chaos debuff. Which you happen to get every time you get too close to a chaos creature. Now chaos creatures? They are very, very strong. And I cannot wait till we get one. At night time. I knocked out my first elemental. A caustic parrot. One of the four elements there are. Just like said. There are caustic, electric, fire, and ice griffin. Oh wow, that's good. I want to tame that one. So I placed down a couple of beds and my trap. I figured out something cool about the S plus dino gates. I then shot the griffin with my little pistol and lured into the trap. Which went sir. Surprisingly well. And then I knocked it out. Blue crystal. This guy was strong, okay? An ice breath attack dealing tons of damage and a swoop attack which does even more. Man, I really, really like this griffin. It was amazing. And it was satisfying killing these once extremely menacing creatures. I also... Finally, went beyond level 100 on my character. <laughs> no day 45. There is no day 45. Nor a day 46. So I just realized that the last couple of days I was recording, everything was going smoothly, and then suddenly, boom! Output delay. Output issue. Up with delay means that the video you recorded gets corrupted. Really a shame because yeah, I got a lot of stuff. And even fought a magical real heroically. I also tamed a couple of parrots. A couple of elementals. Here, Eleme. Here, see? Got another call stick. I tamed a fire parrot. Which is really quite a shame. Because I did so much. Just for it all to... Just for it all to just... Day 47, and I made a little deal for myself. Considering there wasn't any footage of me killing a man's car, I decided that I owed it to myself and everyone watching that I defeat another one. Then, and only then, can I use the fab sniper rifle. Luckily, there was a man's car just waiting to be clapped. There we go. Dive down. Combo him. One more. No, 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 no. One more, one more, one more. There we go, that was a combo. He's going to fly, he's behind me. Oh, he's not flying. Just that this battle was extremely underwhelming and did not capture the same kind of excitement I had during the first battle for the Fabby Sniper. I also took on the Dragon Balls, hoping that this fight would be more entertaining. Go. No! No, don't do it! Returning home, I added the dragon trophy to my hall of victories. And I got a chem bench crafted and placed down, which would help far better and greater than mortars and pestles. The cost of firing this fab sniper rifle was also. Yeah, a lot, okay. I harvested metal, rocks, and stones. Got charcoal and crafted a lot of gunpowder. During the evening, I went outside of my cave to kill a bunch of trilobites at my beach for oil. Day 48 starts off with a death worm. An alpha death worm on these tropical islands. <laughs> this really doesn't seem right. Not at all. But I had to kill it for my trophy bowl. Oh, the oil was used to craft meat jerky in the preserving bin, which went into craft the later tiers of kibble such as Apex. I also got an industrial grill for more cooking. Day 49, and it was parrot taming day. Got an ice parrot before traveling to the north, where I found a fire parrot. Male. This was good as I had already gotten a female tamed in those days that I didn't record. Most unlucky thing happened though. A black boulder. Captain Black Boulder was nearby to make my life a little bit harder. However, I also figured out that my griffin was excellent for taming as I could simply freeze these parrots stuck to the ground. Nighttime. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer taming time. That was not what I wanted.
Yeah, boy. Day 50. All the way there, guys. Hooray! Man, I must be the worst and the slowest progressing Primal Fear player this world has ever seen. Later. Surprisingly, I found Mr. Mensch laying on the beach. An intruder in a world which wasn't his to conquer. Well, well, well. When I traveled home, I stopped at the beaver dams and found a big fish stuck in a little canal. So I tamed it, along with another ice parrot. Slowly I was stacking up the amount of these little parrot guys. And during this I just could not stop thinking of how awesome it would be to have an Apex Dino. Oh wait, I didn't tame the ice parrot. As a buffoon naming this had murder on his mind. A51 and I hatched no more baby parrots. Males that I could kill for feathers before letting them off. But then something interesting spawned in. So, you know how Primal Fear has creature variants, right? Which have lower spawn rates than normal ones, right? Um, this guy probably had like a 0.001% chance of spawning, but it did. And I stood there, petrified. Keyboard. When you look at Primal Fear videos, no one, absolutely no one, has it worse than me right here. Day 53, and I only had elementals, a third tier of creatures. Later, once I calmed down a bit, I went out with Arnold. Yeah, I haven't mentioned him in some time. Go on a wood run, and I harvested a bit of obsidian. I then used the obsidian to get a net gun and some net projectiles, and I flew around the roof. Now I got the net gun because I hoped that it could help tame more parrots. No! But it did not work. Still tamed that guy though. I swear, it was another one of the recording sessions where I just don't get anything done at all. As I died, once more to bullshit. After retrieving my stuff and Rudolph, somehow survived that gigantic explosion, I tamed one more parrot. And at night time, I found the Mr. Big Blue Boss oh Boy. Oh my. Oh my. My. God. <laughs> oh right. I discovered something groundbreaking about dark creatures. You see, I killed this parrot and I got every type of feather. Yes, you heard that right. Every type of feather from a single dark parrot. Electric feathers? And caustic and... We don't need the electric parrot. We actually don't need it. Because if we just get like elemental advanced ones, if we just... No! A56, and I knocked out my first Apex Dillo before traveling home, as I didn't yet have any kibble for it. Oh, and I finally get ammo for my Fabby Sniper. I then made blue narcotics before upgrading it to. No, I didn't upgrade it yet, as I needed even more stuff to craft for narcotics. So I got my Moss Chops guy with me and harvested a bunch of shrooms in the swamp. I also knocked out two more Apex Dillos near the swamp, and then traveling home. Happened something terrible. It shouldn't have gone out like this. It should have gone out to fighting a boss. But it was a chaos spirit bee. So long. Blue crystals. Day 57 and I was going insane. Gentlemen, I got 5 Apex Kibble. I also crafted a lot more blue narcotics with the rare shrooms we harvested and converted them into Apex narcotics. While that was getting crafted up, I tamed each one of my Apex Dilophosaurus. I also just saw what kind of kibble I could get now, being fabled. Omega, Elemental Advanced and Special Kibble, which was very nice. This meant I could basically get everything except for Demonics and Celestials. While on the subject of getting things, I got a Primal Industrial Forge. 
which got metal smelted even faster than a regular industrial forge. With this one, I would surely have metal for days. And then harvest the metal with big lava, which was inconvenient to say the least. Yeah, and this forge sure was insane. Just insane. Excuse me? I also learned that I could craft boss kibble. Not before I could tame anything I wanted. I still need more apexes for an increase in egg production. And day 58, I found an apex rex. And tested out my brand new fabby sniper. That is a sexy bit of torpor. I liked what I saw. I likey likey very much. This was an excellent tool for taming more creatures. Just excellent. And the apex rex was tamed in no time. Toward the end of the day, I found another extremely high level Apex Rex and shot that one a couple of times as well. And it just feels so satisfying. With every shot I fire an unexplainable amount of weight gets removed from my shoulders. The A59 and I found a dark Mega Raptor. Remembering that these give every feather type, I knocked it out quickly with the heavy sniper. One issue though, I had no kibble. And when I went home to craft it, I noticed that I needed caustic feathers. So... There's some bursts of murder. And I got an imprinted Apex Rex as well. Day 60, and with my good Apex Rex, Mr. Crimson God, I took on a Megapithecus that was being a douchebag. If I hadn't known any better, I would have just used Apex Rexes to fight that Mr. Blue Boy. But Apexes don't even stand a slimmer of a chance fighting the bosses of Primal Fear. Oh yeah, you guys wondering what happened to the Mega Raptor? I think it died. Yeah, so, I found something else to tame. A level 230 buffoon Ferox. A Ferox with cannons, missile launchers, and cherry on top. It had the ability to throw nukes. So quite obviously, I began knocking it out. special kibble. So I rushed back home and got the kibble. And near the end of 61, I tamed it. Now this is where the games get interesting. You see, this guy had cannonballs that did small damage, but then I discovered that it also had airstrikes. Missiles that did a whole lot more than simply a single explosion. Just, just look at me obliterating this group of Brachiosauruses. Now me thinking I'm some hot shit, I started taking on Apex and Dogmas Rex. But I gave up, just seeing that the missiles couldn't be aimed up, and it felt very awkward shooting with it. Indamus also had a ridiculous regeneration, which made it nearly impossible to really do any consistent damage. But boy, oh boy, did I discover something insane that evening while going home. No! I can throw dynamites! I have another ability! I can throw giant dynamites! <laughs> One million damage! I should have just used this! One million damage! I can throw nuclear bombs! I can throw nuclear bombs! Oppenheimer! <laughs> Woo! Oppenheimer! Oh no, Ramshackle loot boss aggro to me! No! No, no, no! Oh, wait, I killed it. <laughs> that was all it took! You're bad, bro, you're bad! Oh, you're bad! You're bad! Get shed on! Get shed on! Get shed on! Get shed on! You're bad! You're so bad! Oh my god, you're bad! So bad! Okay, screw it! I want to kill that spirit bee! He launched nukes into my face, and I do not appreciate that whatsoever. Oppenheimer! Yeah, how does it feel? Stupid bee. I had to quote Mr. Oppenheimer himself. 
Now I have become death, the destroyer of worlds. Day 63 and that felt good. I can finally relax a bit, knowing that I have the strength to take down spirit creatures. I also use some healing steel on my buffoon ferals to heal her up to maximum HP before using everything I had to craft more bullets. More bullets for the fabricated rifle. And I started crafting a cargo boat full of narcotics. The day was basically spent like that. Just doing work around the base and preparing. Day 64 I found a dodo wyvern. And I was confident I could defeat Oh yeah, bitch! Oh. <laughs> Very... Embarrassing, to say the least. So I made sure to give it the good Oppenheimer before traveling back to my cave. That evening, I took on one of the most terrifying creatures we could fight yet. A primal rock trick. And it was epic. Launch some bombs, jump, and swim away. And then repeat that process over and over again. It was scary. And the rock trick sure got me nervous and scared from time to time. The battle lasted throughout the night. But then, it actually got stuck. Somehow. So I managed to defeat my very first primal creature. Primal defeated. Day 65 I traveled back to the swamp to collect rare flowers with the giant moss chops. As I needed these to make the blue narcotics. Oh yeah, I also found a pretty low level Omega Rex. And figured, why not tame it? Or at least knock it out. With the rare flowers and rare shrooms, I converted every narcotic into blue narcotics. And I got my very first Omega Yes, kettle. we have enough. Yippee. On the way home that day, I also found an amazing griffin variant. That celestial griffin. I wanted to tame that celestial griffin. Blessings and blessings. This game really wanted me to succeed. As I found both a male and female dark mega raptor practically next to each other the following day. Oh, there's another one. <gasps> female. Female and male. Woo! We did it. I knocked out one, then the other, and went back home to get the elemental kibble. Taming these will be beneficial for two things. One is increased elemental egg production. And the other is that I can get every feather type out of the same creatures now. Back at the base, I also made a shit ton of blue bullets. Near the end of the day, I got even better Apex armor from the blueprints I had collected. And now I was dripped the ever-loving f*** out. I was iced out, as iced out can be. Iced Rolexes, iced coffees. I was Mr. Ice Legend. I have to say, 66 was extremely successful. Well, it was nearly perfect, but the ending was one of tragedy. And no one likes it when the story of our perfect hero ends in a tragedy. Excusez-moi! I then died two more times trying to retrieve my stuff and shared a moment of silence for Rudolf. No! On the mountain, I found another elemental ice griffin, which I knocked out because, yeah, Rudolf was dead. Blue crystals was dead. And I desperately needed a flyer. A flyer? Like what? Like a dragon? Oh, yeah, I knocked out a dragon. Which surprisingly was extremely easy, as it did not fly up to fight me. But, damn it was expensive. As I put more than 80 red bullets into this guy before she went to sleep. Guess what? When I tamed it, I literally nearly lost instantly to a primal raptor. Oh, oh, passive! Passive fleet, passive fleet, passive fleet, passive fleet! Yeah, it was close. Day 68 started off crafting 5 Omega Kibbles, as I needed to tame a couple of those to have a good egg production. I also tested out my dragon a bit, and was extremely disappointed. That's really not that strong. I expected this guy to deal like 50,000 damage per ball, and that fire to do even more, but nuh uh. However, its strength wasn't how much raw damage it could do, but the fire gave off over time, which easily tore apart a titanosaur. I later found a pair of Indominus, and I wanted one of those teamed as well. And this is where the fire debuff really shines. It didn't even take 5 minutes before the pair of Indominus, with more than a million HP, a bit the dust and crumbled. Well done, Draconis. That's your name. Draconis. Later toward the end, I found two more extremely high level Indominuses and took those down as well. Like, day, day 69? Is that still funny? 
Anyway, I knocked out and got my second Omega Rex at the start of that day. If I'm finding and knocking out another 150 Omega Rex. Oh, now we have all of the Omegas. The rest of the day was just spent farming a bunch of metal and doing some modifications. We're rich. We're rich. We're rich. We're rich. Day 70, I found a primal raptor. Just challenging me right outside of my base. So I had little to no choice fighting him. And just like the rock drag, I just jumped between the cliffs, throwing and shooting rockets. Utility fetch couldn't handle anymore. I also got an egg incubator and started hatching my apex and dominuses. Once more, I also had to kill trilobites harvest their little shells for oil and silica pearls. Oh yeah, I also read that apex babies needed apex kibble to be raised up, making them extremely expensive to raise. And already with this low level meal I realized that I stood no chance of raising it to adulthood, as it would starve. So I gave it a fitting name. I also started breeding my dark mega raptors. Outside of my base I discovered quite a lot of fabled dinos nearby. And we need those for egg production as well, to get the monarch and celestial kibble. So I knocked out an Anki, then an Argentavis, and then another Ankalo. And I annihilated the Celestial Ammo. I then crossed some Fabled Kibble, and I got two of them tamed up. At night time, I crafted my last Kibble and had to parkour jump over to the knocked out Argentavis to tame it. I also started getting eggs from my Ankalos and getting a bunch of Dark Mega Raptors. Some which would be used for breeding, others for their feathers. I mean, Duh, that's why I named them dead. The next day started off very weirdly, as my Mrs. Oppenheimer got Yoink. stolen. What? There you are! Ah! Jump! Please! Anyways, there was another fabled Argentavis there. Which was the main reason I got my open armor stolen in the first place. I then knocked it out and tamed it up, completing my set of Fable Lords and Tavis. Day 73, and I got another Fire Griffin knocked out and tamed. Oh, I so destroyed my eardrums. That was just so loud. Oh my god. Oh, that was loud. No, oh, ain't no way, bro. Like eventually you get to a point where it's just that just no longer fun. It's just stupid. You know? Like I know I have missiles, right? They're like big. They're not that big. Look, they're only like. How? Good heaven's name. Did Mrs. Oppenheimer just get blown apart by her own bomb? And by a darned Kentro? How did she die? To something so dumb. And setting up these gravestones did not get me over the tragedy. I also said a bit of final words. Here lies Mrs. Force of July. Oppenheimer! Oppenheimer to the very end. And now, now, this is 4th of July. I know you're watching this guy. You can Oppenheimer as much as you want. Keep Oppenheimering. Keep Oppenheimering. Day 74 and I found a near max level of the Leo. And I wanted to fire more missiles again. It would work great as a replacement for Oppenheimer. And if not for the Leo, then for this Terrorbird. Yeah, I found a Buffoon Leo and a Buffoon Terror Bird basically next to each other. In the desert. I knocked out both. Got saddles and a kibble. And traveled back to tame them. Which was interesting. As the good Leo just floated midair. Uh, uh. Oh. I then went on a murderous killer spree with SpaceX. Damn! This flying lizard whale was beyond my expectations. I then stumbled across an orbit in Carno near the volcano, and I had the same feeling of being an underdog as when I began this playthrough. I had to prove myself. I had to take down this origin. 
And so, I fired missiles upon missiles, scorching the ground in cursed flame. I got the origin stuck swimming in magma, like a little dum-dum. And I enjoyed this so much. These constant ticks were like music to my ears. Midnight. That was halfway dead. Morning of day 75 and it only had a sliver of left of HP. And then, just a little later, I defeated my very first origin. And oh my lord, I got a new piece of flak armor. Yellow and gold colored. With infinite durability. This armor wouldn't break or crumble no matter how hard I get punched in the face. I felt powerful. And later defeated another mini boss, Captain Black Boulder. From killing that origin, I also got origin blood. And I discovered some insane narcotics I could craft with it. Yeah, I could knock out anything now. Well, almost at least. As I didn't yet have the compound bow needed to fire such an arrow. The rest of the day I spent killing primal after primal creeper. Until I eventually found an artifact on. But these boys are nice because they carried artifacts. And I needed artifacts to craft origin summons. And we're going to kill a lot of these artifacts. A lot of these in this playthrough. I then found another origin. This time a Kairuku. And decided to kill it. It was worth it. Yeah, it did take a very long time. But it was worth it. As I got more of that gold colored armor. And if there's one thing I like above all else. It's to be covered in gold. Found another artifact though. Killed relatively fast. And found <laughs> yet another one near the wyvern trench. And I saw a celestial giga. Oh and there's an origin. Anyways I killed the artifact though. And hey. Even another origin. Yes another one. And I was unstoppable with this Leo. In SpaceX. Oh yeah. About that Celestial Giga, I wanted to tame that Giga, but did I? Well, I can't remember, but I keep watching. Anyways, my one Dominus Rex was fully grown when I returned to base. Yeah, I forgot to explain to you guys, but I figured out a little trick to not bother with feeding its kibble. And that's just outran it in Dominus and my base. Because then it would just grow up and not have to eat anything. Day 77, and I got my very first Celestial Kibble. Or make that my very first three Celestial Kibbles. I then got a primal compound bow, origin narcotics, and converted those to arrows. And then I went out to tame the celestial griffin I was eyeballing all Ow. this time. Yeah, I lost that ice griffin. I didn't know that this griffin had an AoE attack. Very unfortunate, but I couldn't bite the bullet yet. So I died once, got my stuff, but then died soon after before really getting my stuff back and sorted. And I fired the origin arrow. There we go. There we go. There we go. Woo! Origin Trank is working wonders. Celestial Griffin tamed. My first Celestial tamed up and I tested it out. Man, this was nice. It could fuse a fire breath attack like a dragon Damn. and had a mini celestial nuke that could obliterate anything. A78, and it was time for a taming spree. You see, yesterday I got a bunch of fabled kibble, as I need more fabled dinos to increase egg production. But I got a fabled PT, then a trike knocked out before taming another PT. I also nuked the area and got rid of any dangerous things with Baby Blue. Yeah, that's how I named my griffin, Baby Blue. Anyways, I also knocked out another trike and then a pair of stegosauruses. Meaning I now had three pa more pairs of dinos that could produce eggs. And then I found another fire griffin and saved that one as well. During this day I also found two more primal carnos. I took them down rather easily with the celestial nukes from my griffin. Day 79 and we are getting closer and closer to the end. Wow. Now I felt invincible in baby blue. So what did I do? I got three origin summons with me, and spawned them all simultaneously, feeling confident that I could easily rip them to shreds. <laughs> I'm in danger! I couldn't believe it. A tiny little ice parrot killed me, and doomed my celestial. But when I get close enough to whistle him away, it was all good. 
I then continued taking down these origins, and discovered just how inconvenient it was to take them on with my Griffin. As the nuke's AoE was minimal, and 8 out of 10 times I missed and couldn't do damage. Eventually I realized that this really wasn't going anywhere and I had to abandon the battle. I then got SpaceX and killed the origins with him. Now I realized something. I needed a demonic creature. And not just any demonic. I needed demonic thorny dragons. As these demonic thorny dragons can shoot hell shots. They can deal hundreds of thousands of damage in a second. I needed them. By day 80, the Origin Spinal was the only one left, and it nearly killed SpaceX with just a single bite. Oh. But nevertheless, it died as well. And man, I got a Primal Combo Ball, and it was capped! Anyways, I then got more arrows, lots more, as I still wanted to tame the Celestial Giga. And now that I had a capped Combo Ball, I knew that I could do it. I then crossed Celestial Kibble, four more pieces, I went out to tame as many Celestial Pairs as I could, starting off with the Celestial Rex. Are you prepared to die for your cause? Whoa! <laughs> I was acting. Yeah, that guy nearly killed us. Anyways, after that I found a Celestial Argentavis and started shooting and knocking it out, just for it to fall asleep in the ocean. Oh my god, do we have tame helpers? We do have tame helpers, okay. Not that it mattered much though, as I got it tamed with no problems. Day 81, and I found more Celestial Archies, and I knocked out a female. I didn't have the kibble to feed it and uh, tame it though, so I traveled home when a Primal Tech Quetzal spotted me and fought me. Oh my god, the Metal Gash! How did they think that was okay to even put it in the game? I'm so sick of this. Come. What in heavens almighty 1% of my HP. That's how little my Celestial Griffin had. 1% left. After that, I had to take a massive breath and heal my Celestial. But then, on my own mountain, I found something <gasps> sexy. Celestial Ferox. Oh, you are speaking my language. Oh, I love big explosions. This blue Ferox was Oppenheimer incarnated. If you thought the buffoon Ferox was a crack, and you have seen nothing yet, this blue Ferox is beautiful, and I just had to tame it. Okay. Now you die. It sees me! On the following day, I got Celestial Kibble and tamed the blue <gasps> Ferox. Meow. Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer the blue. I also retrieved the Argentavis, but that's not as important. As evening rolled along, I started crafting some primal toxic narcotics, as I wanted to combine these with arrows to finally knock out the Celestial Giga. But day 83 started off with doing something totally different, as me and my Apex Dinos took on an origin, Argentavis. This really felt like a waste of time. Come on, legend. Now you're going to tame that Celestial Giga, right? Nope. I went on a metal run with my Fable Hank. I then got even more Primal Toxic Arrows. And on day 84, I went out to tame the Celestial Giga. But then, a slap across my face. As the Celestial Giga had evaporated into thin air. Well, there goes that. Tons of preparations just for nothing. Luckily, the arrows wouldn't go to waste. As I set my sights on taming the demonic thorny dragons wow. again. Taming that first one was relatively smooth. And on day 85, I found another demonic and wanted to knock it out. But I guess it knocked me out um. instead. Now, I'm really mad! Before getting my stuff, I had to heal Baby Blue up again. As the burning debuff really did a number on him. But this thorny really wanted to give me the middle finger. As it killed me again. And it got my baby blue near death as well. Again! So I just decided to use one of my origin arrows on it instead. As I couldn't be bothered getting killed over and over and over again, risking baby blue's life. Now that I had two demonic thornies knocked out, I traveled back home to Kakibble. Got 
to settle, and had its gobble on a max experience points potion. And now Lucifer, as I named her, was strong beyond strength. After getting more kibble, I traveled out of my cave again to travel over to Thorny Dragon number two, and got attained. But then, something ridiculous happened. Oh? Oh! He oh, he does shoot. <gasps> Emotional damage. Baby Blue died because I couldn't keep my fingers off the left mouse button. The gravestone number three was built, and a moment of silence was held for Baby Blue. <laughs> And this fabled Ardentavis couldn't even give me a moment to mourn. Oh. Man, this shit sucked. I did however make most of the day by testing out my Lucifer. And man, she was strong. Obliterating oh, primal dinos like if they were nothing. Dealing hundreds of thousands of damage in a second. Now I felt confident enough to take down anything that would stand in my way. And the following day I took on the strongest origin yet. An origin wyvern. Let's go. 5,000, we have 6,000. Oh, a new sniper. After that, I found a celestial wyvern right on the side of the mountain, and I wanted to tame it. I still had a sour taste in my mouth from losing my beloved baby blue, and I needed something that could travel faster than SpaceX. But it wasn't before day 88 that I shot the celestial wyvern, throwing it over before launching an origin arrow straight in its body. I was also dangerously close to dying as you can see, and I had to fire three arrows because two just didn't register. But in the end, I got it knocked out. A very dangerous situation, we did it. Just remember, I had enough celestial kill for my attempted giga tame, but taming the wyvern was no stress. Blue smoke celestial nukes were rather mediocre, the fire breath wasn't the best, but at least I could travel pretty fast now. With the artifacts collected, I crafted a couple more origin summons. As I needed to kill at least each origin twice by the end of this 100 days to summon both the demonic empress and celestial indominus. Day 89, and I traveled back to the snow to fight more origin Kairukus. But also another artifact on the beach. And my gee, what an improvement it was to have Lucifer to take these origins instead of using SpaceX. Just shredding them apart. Later that evening, I saw a fabled Magmasaur and impulsively knocked it out because I thought it would be cool to tame. I also took on some allosaurs. Or so I thought they were only allos. What? The game is broken! I'm losing every single game! Again! Again! 20 shots on target, zero goals! Every match! Every match! I hit the pulse 20 times! I have enough! Enough! At base, I couldn't even take a moment to mourn for my dead Celestial Wyvern, as I discovered another issue. My crop plots were out of fertilizer. So before traveling back to get my stuff, I had to sh take a shit. Day 90. Just 10 left. And I was flying around naked. No armor. Getting my stuff back from yet another dead creature. And yes, I tried to knock out the demonic shine on oh. origin arrow. Little did I know that this was untamable. Why? Well, it didn't have a foot bar. So there goes an origin arrow. Just wasted like that. On the way home, I found a fabled Mega Shallon. Now, these guys have an insane ability as they passively produce the materials needed to craft the better narcotics. Being tinned to a narcoberry seed, and both rare flowers and mushrooms. So I knocked it out to let you tame it up. Back at base, I got even more origin summons and the fabled kibble. Origin. And later went out with my ankylo to harvest berries. Day 91, and more bullshit happened. This fat Mega Shallon had perhaps the slowest food train in the whole game, so it was going to take a lot of time for this guy to be tamed up. Even this 100x team helper didn't do anything. 
Later I jumped over and across nearly the whole ocean, which felt very epic, to tame up the other thorny dragon. I also saw a celestial golem up on the mountain I'd say the thorny dragon on, and decided to tame that one up as well. If I couldn't get my hands on the celestial giga, then I'll just tame the golem. Oh my god! Five celestial kibble for this one team? Now that just hurts. I decided that night to upgrade my farm a little bit by getting greenhouse structures and constructing a little greenhouse. Now hopefully the crop production wouldn't stab me in the back like it used to. So, I needed five kibble for the golem. And I only had four. I needed to wait for my crops to grow. But what did I do? I went on a little killing spree in the swamp. But little did I know that I would find a very dangerous enemy here. What? Demonic Capro? Hey, bro, come on now, dawg. Come on, man. This Capro did a number on me and Lucifer. But I had to act fast. I couldn't lose yet another team to this game. I couldn't. So I crafted the Soulbook gun. No idea why I didn't get that any sooner, but uh, yeah. I went to the swamp and tried to save Lucifer. There we go, we saved Lucifer. This method of saving a dino sure feels scuffed, but uh, I was fed up with this game, couldn't care less. I then got the last piece of kill by more tame helpers and tried to get the Mega Shell untamed. But without luck. Even a 200x tame helper didn't do anything to lower the food stat, making me extremely frustrated. I then got my Celestial Golem, and called the Blue Rock. The Rock in Blue. Day 93 and I got a welcome surprise back home. A griffin corn, just begging to be tamed. And I needed to have my wings back. Sure it would be nice to fly instead of risking jumping into one or the other dangerous creature on blue Oppenheimer. And my god, this one was fast. Even what faster than baby blue. Boy? Oh, this day I decided to take Lucifer into a very dangerous battle as I got all my origin sounds with me. Got to a centered rock between tons of cliffs. The boss fighting rock. And took on every origin at once. First I dealt with the Artitavis. And then the Fire Wyvern. As those were the only ones who could really do the most amounts of damage. Up and now this is where the real fun starts. Before moving on to the group of land origins. Which all fell relatively fast. One after the other. Just burned, scorched and blazed out of existence. Anyways. The loot was nice. The origin tokens were nicer. And hey, I finally got a Primal Fear shotgun. Day 94 was when I noticed that I still had a lot of leftover kibble. Just getting spoiled in my Primal Smithy. So I decided to put them to use instead. I got an Ice Griffin tamed. And harvested some crystal on the mountain to make a bunch more soul balls. Before eventually finding a dragon. I shot arrows and bullets into it till it eventually got knocked out on the volcano. Where there was a wandering loot boss. Or how I call them. Wandering Elbies. And I wanted to get some pretty loot from its body. See? It's ramshackle tier by default. But by damaging it and getting it to a sliver of HP, it enters a stage called Berserk. Where it evolves into the next tier. Oh, it's an apprentice now. And now I just had to fuck this over and over again. Till it was ascended. But that sure was easier said than done. Oh! And another one bites the dust. And another one, and another one. I hope I don't get the copyright claimed. No, no, man, no, man. This was bad. All right, real bad. No more flyers now, and my stuff. Next to a constantly evolving new boss. It's fighting like everything. Okay. Come on over here. The fact that a little unicorn died makes me so so. Ah! Oh. I smell pennies. It couldn't have possibly aggro to me. Ow. This loot boss and a primal tech stack over constantly duking it out. That's why it eventually reached Mastercraft here. 
Once I finally got my stuff, I ended the battle swiftly with Lucifer. But the loot was really bad. Nothing of any value. Nothing that I could use. So I got my unicorn griffin killed for nothing. Luckily I have my ice griffin, so I could at least travel away and back home to continue my original plan. To tame stuff. Like this green toxic turtle. I would then start off by knocking out an ice Archeopteryx, but it was dangerously close to some Apex Allosaurus. So I took those on as well. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Okay, so there was a Celestial Allo as well. Well, there goes another Griffin. And I was I was so done with this shit. Why do I even bother taming things I don't need? Day 96 will be a very meaningful day. As you can see, I'm preparing well to fight the bosses of Primal Fear by leveling up my Celestial Golem to maximum and doing the same with my Indominus Rexus. Yes, I wasn't going to fight this battle alone. It would take some warriors with me to fight the Celestial Indomin Demonic Reaper. Yes, so oh yes, I plan to fight both at the same time. I later checked back on my Mega Shallon, and again, it was not eating anything whatsoever. And after another 200x, nothing happened. While there, I also saw an Orbiton Wyvern at the Wyvern Trench. And I obviously took it on. Just one issue. It was flying. I was not. And aiming with this Thorny Dragon was not the easiest task in the world. Shotgun was also awful nope. actually for nope. staring at. Nope. 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 Brav. Finally. Oh my god. There was also another Origin Raptor on the same mountain, which I melted and destroyed in a matter of seconds. At the evening I prepared better toward the final boss battle by placing down foundations and harvesting the trees blocking the cliff that I would fight the bosses on. I also uncrowded the rock in blue and put on my turret mode so it rained down celestial nukes on the Emperor and Empress. I also put down some Apex Indominus to act as cannon fodder, and so they could distract the bosses even more. Finished off the day by crafting my Origin Summons and Origin Narcotic. Apparently I had also crafted the Emperor and Empress Summons some days prior as they were just laying around in my smithy. But I got those as well. And on day 98 I went back to the cliff. Fight the final battle. Here we go! Two the one Oh, they did not last at all! <laughs> oh. I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying! Whoa, 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 I got heated off, I got thrown off! Ah! No, rock and blue! Just keep firing, keep firing, keep firing! <laughs> Number one! Oh! Oh my god! It's, oh, we did it! Oh my god! Did it? Whew. Ascended demonic gauntlet stops you from getting all burned. Whew. We won. I mean, obviously. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't stressing at all. You were. The loot was fabulous, all right. Got a sword that gave me some insane stats, and when used, it could summon a celestial Alasor minion. Oh yeah, I also celebrated that day by summoning the Empress up again to tame her. That shot the orange and arrow into her. But then I nearly oh, lost oh, my oh, double oh, thorny. No! That was way too close. But luckily the Empress got knocked out. However, rather weirdly. As it was knocked out underground. 
eventually I realized that I had to jump off my space X yes. to access the inventory and team her up. There you are. The following day I had a lot of fun with her, destroying absolutely everything with the fireballs. But once I discovered that she had an X special tech, which were burning spikes straight from the deepest corners of hell, I managed to completely destroy a primal aloe. And oh, these spikes were fun. Just look at me melting this origin Argentavis. Oh, look at that melt! After having my way, I cryled her up and summoned the other boss, the Celestial Emperor, to tame him up as well. I tamed him, and I discovered what attacks his head, being massive Celestial shit. I then tried to take on the Primal Car now, and it went badly. Like, unbelievably bad. This Emperor was quite a disappointment, to say the least. And eventually I had to run because I couldn't deal any kinds of damage to this car now. Luckily Satan, my Empress, made quick work of no. And there we have it! 100 days of Prime of Year completed. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, all of that. Because we did it! However, our adventure is not yet over. We have only just begun. Econ's revenge. We must take him on.